okay, a lot of people are intimidated about the airbrush. They're interested in it, but they're afraid that it's really complicated and it's difficult to master. It's really just the opposite. All this thing does is it sprays paint. It was designed and intended to be something to make art easier, and it is. Thousands of years ago, primitive people started off using a straw as an airbrush. They'd load that up with pigment and blow through that, and that was a lot harder to use than the current uh, airbrush. So this literally is so easy, a caveman can do it. So please don't be intimidated about the airbrush. Okay, what I mean by simple is all the airbrush does is it sprays paint. That's it. That's all. It's got a two-stage or double-action trigger. As you push down on the trigger button, it releases air. As you pull back, it's going to release material. That is paint. So you can increase your air pressure, and you can vary your, the amount of paint material coming out as well. That's it. That's all. Fundamentally, that's all the airbrush does. It sprays paint. Okay, let's talk about equipment real quick. Your compressor can be either a big shop compressor, which has the advantage that you might already have it, and it's really good for holding a lot of air and not running all the time. Uh, you'll just need an adapter to run it to this smaller size hose for the airbrush. And then this is a smaller airbrush design compressor. There's no advantage to either one in terms of the air pressure. You can run about 15 PSI, depending on what you're doing, more or less, uh, for the different things that you might do. Be sure to keep your water trap emptied. And the uh, little compressors are a little annoying. They run all the time. They tend to vibrate themselves around. Okay, there's a lot of uh, airbrushes you can get. If you just want to get started in airbrushing and try it out, I think you're going to be happy with these uh, ones for Amanda Worldwide on eBay. I make no money whatsoever for uh, referring people to them. I've tested a lot of airbrushes, uh, and you can get some really cheap, crummy ones that aren't any good. And these ones are cheap, but they're very good. The Model 130 in particular is about what you'd want if you want something a little bit more intricate. The Model 180 is pretty good as well and gives you air pressure control at the nozzle. This is the Model 130 here we're showing. Uh, it is very well made. It is made in China, but so are most of the airbrushes that say that they're not made in China as I've found. So this one, you can get some cheap ones that are no good. I'm telling you, these ones are pretty good. And I recommend them. They're in the 10 to $20 range. And the equivalent ones uh, with the name brand are in $100 to $200 range. So as you play around with the airbrush, you're going to find out real quickly and easily this common sense stuff uh, that you can change with just the airbrush. How close or far you are from the surface is going to change how fine of an area, a line, or a point that you'll be able to make. How quickly and smoothly you move your airbrush along is going to produce different things. Whenever you stop or slow down, you're going to create blobbing effects and so forth. All very simple, basic stuff. You play around with your airbrush for a few minutes or an hour, and you're going to figure all of this stuff out. We'll kind of show you go over the make quick lines, you make nice and smooth quick lines, strokes, and so forth. Uh, there's not that much you can do with just the airbrush. Most of the airbrush art that you do, 90-some percent of it, is produced with what you have in the other hand, templates, stencils, and so forth. Okay, these are dagger strokes, where you make these little strokes like this, also called rat tail strokes. A lot of people will tell you to practice this if you want to, fine. If not, fine. I'll just show you different things you can do here. And it's all common sense. Play with the airbrush. If you're willing to have fun with the airbrush, you're going to learn all this stuff all by yourself with some poster board and some paint real quickly. It's, there's nothing to this. All you're doing is spraying paint. These little rat tails or rocket tails or uh, dagger strokes do different directions and so forth. Just help teach your brain the control over the airbrush. And basically the, the one thing you're going to take from all of that as you do that is you're going to learn to be moving that airbrush. When it's moving, you're making smooth uh, shapes and lines and so forth. And the slower you go, the more jagged you're going to get, the more blobby things are going to get and so forth. Just play around with this. If, if you want to play with the airbrush, if you think this will be fun and interesting, you're 99% of the way there because it's just that easy. If you're willing to play around and have fun, you will learn the airbrush. Okay, so templates and stencils, other devices and materials to control the paint. Let's show you some just some quick template ideas. If you run a, a line of paint down the edge of the straight edge, this is cardstock paper, 
you're going to get an edge that's sharp and fogs off. That's what the airbrush is going to do. And the angle that you put the airbrush to is going to determine a lot of that fogging off effect. Now that fogging is what a lot of people call the airbrush effect. Now technically that's a gradient. You want to be familiar with that. And that's what the airbrush does really well is it creates that smooth, nice gradient. And that's what the airbrush is famous for. It's not all it does, but it's what it's famous for. It's how you do your highlighting and shadowing. And uh, you play around with templates and stencils a little bit, just some pieces of paper, you'll get a feel for the, how fine the lines you can make. And that effect, you're always going to have that gradient if you're just doing a freehand template like this or a stencil. And you're just going to mix and match and change things up, and we'll see some different things you can do. Okay, now let's do a slightly different one. We're going to do it uh, going left and right. This is going to be a curved, kind of tricky little thing, more of a stencil. And if we go down a line down here, we're going to get a, a line that fogs off to the right. As we saw before, it's a nice curvy one. This would be for making a crack or in a skull or something like that. It would be kind of cool. You come in with the opposite template from the other side there, and you spray down that same line going the other direction. So you can get a sharp line that fogs off both left and right to both sides. So that's another thing you can do. And basically, it's as simple as all this. You can have a line that fogs off one way, a line that fogs off both ways. And then we'll show you bringing in a stencil here in a second. And we'll show you some other things you can do. Okay, now we'll do a stencil. We'll show you how to get solid areas. With a controlled area, you get a you know, controlled effect, and you can get rid of the airbrush effect if you want. This is a can of repositionable adhesive, which is one of my favorite tricks I've developed and showed people over the years uh, for putting stencils on and holding them in place real nice. You just put on a little bit of that repositionable adhesive real lightly, let it tack off, and then it's just like a post-it note. There's no residue or anything. It's really low-tack adhesive. It's great for airbrush art. And there's a couple different brands you can get and uh, you get them at uh, off supply stores and so forth. You just put down a few couple different shapes here, lines, a letter, and so forth. And you can do logos or whatever, however you want to do this, whatever you want to do. If you want something solid, you can do that with the airbrush, and then you can mix and match solid and gradient effects. Again, that's you know, the gradient effect being more what people call the airbrush effect, but when you want and need solid areas it's very easy to do with the airbrush as well again all the airbrush does is it sprays paint so anything you see with the airbrush isn't so much a result of the airbrush but all these control materials you're using with it i'll remove the uh, stencil here and you'll see you get uh, sharp lines sharp objects sharp logos sharp letters whatever you need to do that way Okay, now in contrast to the airbrush, your uh, traditional paintbrush, bristle paintbrush, is going to make these stroke marks, and that's got a couple of problems. Uh, now, that's really neat if that's the texture look you, you want, but if you want that smoother gradient look of fogging effect that you get with the airbrush for a smoother surface texture look, uh, that's going to be better for you. It's going to look more realistic for a lot of things. And the other thing about the... Uh, bristle paintbrush stroke marks is that those are raised areas of paint. So by the time you finish a piece of artwork, getting it clear and smooth for an automotive finish or a motorcycle, a helmet, what have you, is next to impossible, if not entirely impossible. So those are the main reasons why you want to use an airbrush. It's to get around those stroke marks. That really is the fundamentals the what, how, and why of the airbrush itself. It's a really simple tool that you can make a lot of really cool, neat art with. And it's easy to learn and easy to do. Be sure to go to my website at chuckbauman.com. We've got a lot of neat stuff there, and free stuff, including images for making stencils and templates for your airbrushing artwork. And we've got my DVDs there as well, which are very thorough, extensive, and very well done, complete, full-length DVDs on airbrushing with lots of tips, tricks, and techniques to creating all kinds of neat airbrush art. Right now, it's a three-DVD set, six hours of airbrush training for only $29.99 with free shipping worldwide.